All right, guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are taking another look at the Acer Zenbook S16, but specifically, we're checking out gaming performance of the new Radeon 890M iGPU that is found within the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 CPU. Of course, Matt did already review this laptop over the last week or two, so this isn't our first hands-on with this machine. However, we did just get a few comments asking about some maybe more detailed game benchmarks, so that is exactly what I'm here to show you and let you know everything there is to know about this new 890M iGPU. So to bring you up to speed then, AMD recently launched its Strix Point mobile processors, including the Ryzen AI9 HX370 that's found within this Asus Zenbook S16. A key part of these new chips, however, is the refreshed RDNA 3.5i GPU, specifically the Radeon 890M, and that features 16 compute units for a total of 1024 cores. The whole idea behind this video then is to really put that iGPU through its paces and see exactly what it can deliver when it comes to portable gaming. For these tests, I am going to be using the maximum fan profile within the MyAcer software so we know we're getting the best possible performance from this chip. As Matt showed in his review, this CPU generally runs at about 33 watts in the Zenbook S16. However, it is also worth keeping in mind that other laptops that have the same CPU may be able to run at higher power targets. And of course, that does have a knock-on effect for the iGPU's performance. But we are looking at the best case scenario for this specific Zenbook S16. It's also worth pointing out that I did manually set the available VRAM to its maximum level of 8 gigs in the MyAcer software. Today's video is going to be a little bit different from normal, however, in the sense that I'm not going to show you a whole heap of charts. Instead, I actually went through a bunch of different games and got some game capture footage, looking at both performance over a range of image quality settings, and then with and without FSR. So the idea is really to give you the best possible feel for a range of scenarios that I think are quite likely for anyone gaming on this iGPU. It is just worth saying, however, I did stick to 1080p resolution as I think we do need to be realistic about iGPU gaming. Kicking off with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 then, first we're running using the basic preset, so it's not quite minimum settings, but it is very close. Honestly, the experience here is better than I expected. We're in the 50 to 60 FPS region, but without any tweaks at all, I think that is very playable. However, I think a lot of people will probably try sticking on FSR, and I've gone for the balance mode here, which gets us more into the 70 to 80 FPS region and sometimes higher when in the indoor environments. In fact, FSR balance mode I think works so well for this iGPU that you could even step up to the balanced in-game preset for slightly better textures and shadows while still maintaining over 60 FPS in this benchmark. So absolutely, Call of Duty is going to deliver playable results on the 890M. Of course, Cyberpunk 2077 is an entirely different kettle of fish and at 1080p using the low preset, this is a pretty tall order with frame rates in the low 30s, which might be fine for some, but I really think whacking on FSR balance will give you an immediate boost into the 50 FPS region, and that did feel a lot smoother to me. In fact, once again, we can actually step up to the medium preset and get some higher frame rates thanks to FSR than we did at 1080p native using the low preset, and that of course will offer improvements to overall graphic quality. As a bonus, I did also want to try the Steam Deck preset, and that does tweak a few different settings, including bumping textures up to high, but it does actually still use the FSR balance mode, and here we can see performance in the high 30s to mid 40 FPS, depending on the exact scene of the benchmark. So again, depending what you're happy with, I would say that is playable for this sort of iGPU. Next up, we have another game which I did think would be easier to run, but the results honestly still surprised me. I'm talking about F123 and we're using the Las Vegas race as the benchmark here. At 1080p native and using the low preset, we were instantly hitting 80, if not 90 FPS, sometimes even touching 100 frames per second without any tweaks, and to be honest, I thought it looked really good to my eye. Also trying out the high preset does of course drop frame rates down into more like the mid 50s 
and you can see that memory usage is now being pushed closer to that 8 gig limit, but it was still fine. FSR balance, however, didn't seem to make much of a difference here, as it often actually looks like we were CPU limited, with GPU utilization often dropping below 90%. So personally, I would stick to 1080p native and low settings for a great experience in F1 23. Forza Horizon 5 is next, and once again, we are getting great performance right out of the gate at native 1080p using the low preset. We can see that in the denser city environments at the start of the benchmark, we're more in the 70 FPS region, but this does actually go higher as we race away into the sparser countryside area. Even at high settings though, I'd say this is terrific performance from the 890M as we're sitting just below 60 FPS, sometimes even going above into the 70s depending on the area. Once more though, enabling FSR balance mode doesn't make much of a difference in this game. Again, I think this is down to CPU load. There are some instances where we do see a frame rate boost of around a handful of FPS, but again, the performance we saw at 1080p using either the low or high settings will net you a very playable experience in Forza Horizon 5. From one horizon to another though, we're now moving on to Horizon Forbidden West, and this is a much more challenging situation as at native 1080p, even using the very low preset is just way too much to ask of these integrated graphics. We're often well below 30 FPS, and it's not even close to playable. FSR balance on its own also doesn't actually help us out that much. Yes, it does boost frame rate, but not by nearly enough to get us above 30 at all times. So you can really see just how heavy things are in this game. It's actually not until we enable FSR frame generation that we get much stronger performance, more like 40 FPS, but there's definitely still some dips here and there. And I wonder if that's memory related or down to the mobile CPU performance, but it's really hard to say for sure. As a final example, I even tried FSR ultra performance mode with frame generation enabled, though I would have to say it looked like absolute sludge with so little image clarity, I would not recommend this mode at all. I also found that the Unreal Engine 4 based Returnal is another tough cookie for this iGPU and CPU combo. The first segment of the benchmark looks okay, but as soon as the camera pans down, low settings and native 1080p got a lot more dicey and we were dropping well below 30 FPS and sitting pretty consistently around 25 frames per second. FSR is supported in this game and again I tried the balance mode, but again I really do think we're running into CPU limits of this Ryzen 9 AI HX370 CPU, at least in this 33 watt form, as again FSR doesn't bring us up to playable levels. That being said, FSR Ultra Performance Mode does help a bit and we can at least hold above 30 FPS throughout the benchmark just about but you would have to really want to play this game as to me, it again looked very blurry with lots of image breakup too due to the incredibly low render resolution at these settings. Next up then, we have an older game, but one of my personal favorites, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where at 1080p native, both of the low and high presets deliver very solid playable performance. Obviously the low preset is gonna give you a higher frame rate, but even the high preset is very solid, sticking around the mid 40 FPS region. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider doesn't actually support FSR, but it does have an option for Intel's XESS, which can run on the 890M GPU using the DP4A instruction set. This will net you about another 10 FPS or so versus native as tested on the high preset here, so that is definitely worth giving a go, but overall, I'm very happy with the results here as the game still looks really good. Just for fun as well, I also enabled ray trace shadows. That's right, I actually used ray tracing on an iGPU with everything on low and then ray tracing at medium. Honestly, it wasn't as terrible as I thought it would be, but it certainly wasn't great hovering around the 30 FPS mark, but this was actually without XCSS. Of course, I would still not recommend this at all as it is a big waste of GPU resources, but I guess it's just some interesting data that I wanted to cover quickly. If you're looking for a new chair, then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro gaming chair, which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, then I recommend definitely checking out Boolies.co.uk. Next up though, we have Spider-Man Miles Morales, benchmarking the introductory cutscene here where we're running the very low preset with and without FSR balance mode. 
If all you need is a locked 30 FPS to be happy, then this will be just fine. But with FSR, we're actually getting closer to the 50 FPS region, and I think it generally looks pretty good too. Now, this can be a faster paced title, however, when you get to web slinging and combat, so enabling FSR 3 frame generation might be worthwhile. And this got us up into the mid 80s, which I was honestly pretty happy with. You could even bump up the settings to the medium preset with frame gen turned on and still get a locked 60 FPS, so there are definitely options here if you are happy to play around with the settings. Finally then, I'm going to close out with Starfield, and I have to say this is a very tough test in this particular area where I'm using the forested region on Jemison as our benchmark. 1080p native using the low preset is only giving us about 24-25 FPS, which is obviously not great. And trying out FSR in its performance mode will boost us up to around 40 FPS, but at the cost of some very blurry image quality. I actually found the best way to play the game was with FSR set to its quality mode, but with frame generation enabled, and that resulted in FPS in the mid-50s getting close to 60 FPS at times, but with passable overall sharpness. It still wasn't great with flickery foliage being the main issue, but it was playable, and for an iGPU, I really do think that is the main thing. So that brings us to the end of our revisit of the Asus Zenbook S16, and specifically, we've been focused on the Radeon 890M iGPU that is found within the brand new Ryzen AI9 HX370 CPU. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this is not a re-review, it's not even really a revisit of the laptop as a whole. I've not been running Cinebench or focusing on CPU performance or anything like that, it's all been about the iGPU, as you guys want to know exactly what sort of gaming experience you can expect from the Radeon 890M. I have to say, I was very impressed overall. iGPUs have come a heck of a long way since I first started benchmarking GPUs, and honestly, you can get a very playable experience in a lot of games, as long as you're happy with low to medium settings. I do think that's especially interesting for the handheld market as well, as we would 100% expect to see a new wave of portable machines using these new Strixpoint CPUs for handheld gaming, so it is really good to see what sort of performance you can expect from an upcoming handheld. Of course, if you have any questions about how we tested throughout this video, or you just want to learn more about this iGPU in general, do leave a comment down below, but that is really where I'm going to leave this video. So if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe and ding that notification bell so you don't miss when we upload a new video. As I mentioned, leave a comment below, and if you want to chat with us further, you can find an invite link to our Discord server in the description. And while you're there, you can also find a link to our merch store, where you can pick up a cool t-shirt like the ones on screen, and if you want to be extra generous, you can even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic for KitGuru, and I'll see you in the next video.